see i was i was discussing about ri so how do we look at what is ri ri is one screen is not shared now no i'm getting black on screen it is seen please check once again and maybe you have to reduce the yeah i will uh, re log in ma'am i'll uh, leave ah, and i'll re log okay. in now is the screen visible yeah yes ma'am now it's visible only you are there yeah ma'am <laughs> you only survivor <laughs> mm. so um, we were discussing about ri ri is calculated as uh, from the operating profit the cost of capital that is deducted so in spite of deducting the cost of capital do they have still uh, some leftover income to meet other expenses so that's the concept basically the operating uh, profit operating income um, minus the weighted average cost of capital applied on the capital employed so the capital employed is generally taken to be as operating assets or assets total assets whatever is the term that is provided to us so the overall cost of capital in uh, after that is deducted from the operating profit is there any residual any leftover income so the way to evaluate that is if ri is positive then um, the, uh, the position is evaluated to be sorry the position is evaluated to be good otherwise it's not so so that's how uh, ri is calculated um, these are the two uh, variables that are used to measure the performance of an investment center see on similar lines or but actually on an advanced level we have another concept called as economic value added see economic value added also talks about from some amount of profit the term is a different thing um, the weighted average capital that is deducted but uh, this one the concept of uh, eva is in place of operating profit it is nopat net operating profit after tax net operating profit after tax minus See the weighted average capital, uh, weighted average cost of capital applied on the capital employed at the beginning of the period. But what is um, net operating profit after tax and then capital employed at the beginning of the year is what we have to look into. See the co the concept of NOPAT is the um, there are in the income statement there are many operating transactions and non operating transactions non cash transactions also included they are allowed to be deducted only after that the amount of tax is calculated 
the nop the concept of nop it says that adjust all the non operating and non cash transactions but since the tax is already the tax is applicable to be deducted on the net profit so then take the controllable operating profit and keep adjusting all that are not allowed to or not supposed to be deducted on account of they being non operating or non cash in nature so if anything was deducted in the income statement add it back on that note we see depreciation increase in provisions these are all non operating in nature so any charge of advertising r and d these are miscellaneous expenses capitalized a portion of that is charged to the income statement as such there is no cash flow going out of the business on account of uh, writing off of advertisement r and d employee training cost etc then non operating in nature is lease payments then uh, any kind of non expense non cash expenses which were earlier deducted um in the income statement but because there is no um uh, either uh, cash flow going out of the business or there is uh, that it is not an operating transaction because it was earlier deducted now we added back as simple as that that's the logic what we have to remember then anything which was credited to the um, pnl account which was considered as a credit transaction it was added to the income that has to be deducted like we have economic depreciation so economic depreciation the term talks about any um, increase in the asset because on account of revaluation sometimes on revaluation we see that the value of the asset is much much more than what it is seen in the books of accounts so the book book value of the asset is something else and the uh, original uh, the actual value which it can realize is something else so when revaluation takes place for the assets so according to the revaluation the value is adjusted in the books of accounts but as such there is no gain which is realized it is only a book transaction a transaction that uh, that is accounted for uh um, because the value of the asset increased decrease in provisions non operating in nature amortization of advertising r&d and employee training depreciation of operating uh, lease payments okay um, any such adjustments that are made in terms of lease payments that ha- uh, that was considered as a credit then that has to be deducted any tax paid including loss tax relief on interest so all non operating transactions are adjusted then find out what is the net operating profit after tax then we also see that the capital in the the impact of these transactions is always seen on the equity so any transaction which has an impact on the equity uh, has to be adjusted and it has to be taken back to the value that is at the beginning of the year the capital employed so we start with capital employed at the end of the period and then to that all adjustments that had an impact on the equity are to be readjusted so an adjustment to reflect the replacement cost of non current assets rather than the book value adjustment to reflect the economic and not accounting depreciation so any kind of a re the valuation uh, if it has an impact uh, amortization of the assets uh, the adjustment of amortization value etc so anything which which has resulted in an uh, in having an impact on the equity have to be readjusted find out what's the total amount of capital employed that was there at the beginning of the period on that wacc is calculated and the cost of capital is deducted from nopat so if we look at ri technically Uh, i'll try to see if it can come up 
uh, if we look at RA, RA is also focusing on the same concept, but the terms that are used are different. Here in EV8 is NOPAT, it is here operating profit or controllable profit. Then we see here it is about um, capital employed at the beginning of the year, but here it is the operating assets. So on similar lines, but our economic um, value added has a trademark. So it is a, a I mean, a concept which considers many other aspects other than uh, focusing only on the operating profit. The concept of value-based management is um, the approach of the management in terms of uh, uh, planning, uh, implementation, etc. In, in order to enhance the value of the shareholders. How the shareholder value can be enhanced is by maximizing the shareholders' wealth. Okay, that, that concept is about the uh, about value-based management. The next topic we have is transfer pricing. So, yeah, the next topic here is uh, transfer pricing. See, the issue of transfer pricing is one of the problems that arise in um, responsibility accounting, responsibility centers. It's a behavioral issue here which can be looked into. See, when um, the organization is divided into multiple departments or divisions, um, each of these departments, there is a manager appointed, manager is delegated with authority, decisions are taken accountability is also brought into picture because of that accountability because of that responsibility each department or the manager of each department want to be evaluated as the best so their aim is to be evaluated as the best so in in that uh, pursuit we also see that sometimes there is some kind of a competitive environment prevailing some situations even uh, unwillingness to cooperate with the other departments in the organization. Such such situations also can be seen. See, one of such situations is about the issue of transfer pricing. Um, what is the price at which the material produced by one department, if required by another internal department, what is the price at which this material is transferred? That's the concept of transfer price. So the tra uh, transfer price is the price at which goods or services are transferred from one division to another division. So what's the issue about transfer price? The, the trans, uh, the, I mean, what is, uh, I mean, to be considered in terms about the price, at what price would they be transferred? So the practical aspect of it arises when, let's, uh, uh, consider that from an example point of view, let's say, uh, I'll write it here. Let's say there is a department, an internal department producing uh, some uh, product, put it as a, a material X or some product, which they are also um, selling in the outside market. So these products or these output, whatever they have produced, uh, is being sold in the market. Then, then uh, if the same material X is required by another internal department, let's name it as A. If let's suppose A uh, department B requires this material A. Now the issue is at what price is this material X going to be transferred to uh, the internal department B. The reason is, since these units are already being sold in the market, they would have set the selling price. So the selling price would be the cost price plus profit. So if it is cost price plus profit, the selling department would want to transfer the material at the same selling price because at the end of the period, the manager would be evaluated about his profitability, his performance, whether he was able to maximize the profit or not. So 
in terms of that performance measurement and evaluation the selling department the manager of the selling department would want to charge the same price to the internal department as well okay but from the buying department point of view from department b uh, managers point of view if you look into that it would be excess cost because the cost because for him it is the cost price that cost price is not at the original cost but it is cost price plus the profit margin <clears throat> so now in that case um now the discussion arises between these two departments as to what would be the price that will be charged by the selling department to the buying department or what is the expectation of the buying department in terms of the price charged for the unit sold since both the units belong to the same uh, same organization um see if it is the benefit of one department it is the benefit of the organization if it is the loss of one department it is the loss of the entire organization so if that is the scenario here we have to discuss about what could be the price that should be decided so that the products can be transferred from one internal department to another internal department to look into that we have to analyze different situations here what is the situation according to that the price can be set the price of the uh, material can be set accordingly i don't know whether the font is clear or not maybe i'll zoom the screen a little better let it it becomes clearer to you the situation is the first one talks about if at all if there is perfect competition prevailing in the market perfect competition is a market where there are many buyers and many sellers present so anything uh, which is produced by the selling department all that will be uh, absorbed by the market there are customers present there in the market to buy all these units so perfect competition a competition uh, a market where uh, all the units that that are produced by the selling department can be sold in the market in such a situation when the selling department has the possibility to sell the products at the market price all the units at the market price if the internal department if another internal department wants this material so the material should be transferred to the other internal department at the same market price so transfer price will be the market price there should not be any compromise because by compromising on the price see it would be uh, profit foregone for the selling department if it is uh, if it is profit foregone for the selling department it is profit foregone for the organization also so on that note um, the price that should be decided on the uh, units transferred is the market price second situation is if there is surplus capacity surplus capacity is basically the unutilized capacity which is available to the firm if it is unutilized capacity let's see um, for example on a scale of um, capacity available from zero to the maximum capacity if at all if there is any um, responsibility center or center where they are uh, operating at a particular capacity level for example let's say 60 70% we are utilizing and um, producing and selling the products so in that case they still have some unutilized capacity uh, unutilized capacity here in this example it would be 40% since they are already operating at 60% capacity <clears throat> the goods are produced and sold already there is a selling price that is um, offered to the customers so they are selling the units at some selling price how do we decide what's the selling price selling price is equal to cost price or the total cost plus the profit margin so total cost includes both the fixed cost and the variable cost so total cost plus profit is the selling price 
So total cost includes the fixed cost. The fixed cost is the cost which remains fixed. See, on a scale of uh, activity, we present it from zero number of units till the maximum number of units. We see that the fixed cost remains same. It would be inferred at zero number of units and it would remain the same till it reaches the maximum capacity. So there is no change in the amount of cost that is incurred on account of fixed cost. So if this is maximum capacity, fixed cost would be the same till the maximum capacity. So when they have decided the selling price, they would have taken care of the total amount of fixed cost. So the total amount of fixed cost uh, is uh, absorbed. It is taken care of it. So this total fixed cost is taken care at 60% capacity at which they are operating, uh, producing and selling the units. So now, if they tap on the unutilized capacity or if they start utilizing the unutilized capacity to produce these additional units to be supplied to the buying department, in such situation, all what they would be incurring is only the variable cost. They will not be incurring any additional fixed cost. It's only the variable cost which would be incurred. If it is only the variable cost, now what is the price that can be set? So the selling price will be basically the variable cost plus the profit margin. It's just, it's, there's no need of including the fixed cost here because fixed cost is already taken care of at 60% capacity. So for the additional production taken up, additional variable cost, whatever is income, the so variable cost plus the profit margin will be the selling price. So they can charge the least price on the transfer of material as low as the variable cost per unit. Okay, so variable cost is the only cost that is incurred. So the selling price can be decided as anything as least is variable cost or variable cost plus some amount of profit. That is when there is surplus capacity available. Next, we, said that, we see that if at all, if there are any production constraints. What does it mean by uh, there are any production constraints? The production constraints basically, they talk about um, they already operating at 100% capacity. No possibility to increase the capacity. So there's a constraint on the number of units that can be produced. But it is a requirement of an internal department. So generally, it would be accommodated. So in this process of accommodating the internal department, maybe some of the units or some of the products that were earlier produced, they have to be stopped. The resources would be diverted to produce the material to be transferred to the internal department. Such decisions are also taken because if it benefits one department, it benefits the organization. So. With that focus, there is uh, <clears throat> with that focus, they may um, have to make some adjustment in cutting down the production of uh, some of the units or some of the products. So if they do not produce those products and sell it in the market, they would be foregoing the uh, profit on or contribution. The fixed cost it cannot be. Uh, eliminated fixed cost anyway will be incurred. So what they would be foregoing is only the contribution. So the foregone contribution on account of not producing and supplying to external supply, external customers, that also can be included in the price which they would be charging. So here in this case, the price that will be decided is the variable cost, Anyway, will be incurred. Fixed cost anyway is fixed in nature. So variable cost plus the amount of contribution that is foregone. So that also has to be taken, taken into consideration. Contribution per unit will be added to the variable cost per unit. And then the selling price per unit will be decided. So it's it, uh, if the arrays of production constraints, consider the variable cost, additional variable cost, plus any amount of contribution that is foregone on account of not um, 
producing and uh, selling the units to external um, customers that amount of contribution should be recovered from the internal department so that would be the selling price then we see the methods of selling price first one is about cost plus pricing second one is market price based market price based is applicable when the competition is severe when it is a perfect competition then there is no adjustment made in terms of the price but whatever is the price that is prevailing in the external market same is the price that it has to be charged to the internal department as well okay but if it is cost plus pricing the cost could be it could be total cost plus the profit margin or it could be the variable cost plus the profit margin so variable cost in situations where they are already operating at a capacity level and over and above that capacity level if anything is taken up it would only be variable cost in addition which will be incurred so variable cost plus the profit margin will be the price <clears throat> decided on the cost plus pricing so it could be in situations it could be total cost plus profit or it could be variable cost plus profit okay so the issues are supply division wants to use total absorption costing to secure recover fixed overheads suppliers fixed cost becomes variable cost for buying division so, because they are incurring that cost so it is uh, variable cost for the buying division okay so this can lead to wrong economic decisions so the decision related to fixed cost is different the decision related to variable cost is different so two part pricing two part pricing is one portion of the material can be transferred at total cost plus profit and other can be at variable cost plus profit so there could be two different types of pricing two part pricing also is possible okay uh, now uh, before we proceed further to not for profit organization how the performance of a not for profit organization is measured what parameters are taken um uh, and then we have a uh, few performance measurement models so i want to take up a case study here to discuss about the methods of transfer pricing but now so it is almost time so it is not possible to take it up so definitely in the uh, next class as soon as we meet uh, we will uh, take up a case study on transfer pricing i also told you that we will do a case study on some other topic in today's class um Uh, maybe we can put us at these things and then straight away start with the uh, case study on transfer pricing once we finish with the uh, case study on transfer pricing we'll take up the other topics about how the performance of a not for profit organization is measured any doubts in what we've done in today's class no ma'am some other student the abhishek is there afshan is there then is it sonita as well yeah sonita was there sonita and jaydeep jaydeep also okay. any other doubts no ma'am okay so let's wind up the class here and then uh, next saturday when we meet we'll start with the case to be on transfer pricing issues and then proceed further with the other topics maybe um, we may require another two classes to wind up the content wise but as many number of days are allotted accordingly i will uh, keep adding the number of case studies to be discussed in the class but content wise i think the content can be delivered in uh, next class and another class so after that we'll decide on what are the topics on which we can take up case okay so right now let's wind it up good day okay thank, thank you ma'am